Oh, hello there. Yes, well, it's another week. We are winding our way through to half term and the um, in <laughs> ongoing madness that is the education system in the UK. Yeah, you end up with one very, 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 very long term and then the others can be very, very, very short. But whoever designs the system has decided that um, it's the only way to go, isn't it? Yes, doesn't make any sense, but we're going to carry on doing it. Ah, like so many other things. Anyway, yesterday was the usual sort of guff in the Sundays. Um, you end up with uh, quite a lot of just lifestyle guff and uh, quite a lot of politics guff. So I thought we'd unpack some of that today. Um, <laughs> about once every few months, um, uh, for some unknown, utterly unknown reason, something like the Times or the Sunday Telegraph will um, uh, roll out an etiquette e expert to tell you what you're doing wrong. Uh, even though you're not okay, and uh, this was a uh, uh, Sunday was uh, Sunday Telegraph was the time uh, time uh, turn of William Hansen. Here he is. He's got that kind of David Cameron wearing a condom style face, which tells you that he's never done a proper day's work in his life. Anyway, he was telling us all about the um, the uh, potential pratfalls there might be when you're buying liquid soap. Yeah, me neither. But um, I actually went on his website, and um, you end up with this very very curious picture. So it's worthwhile looking. Looking at this, right? Okay, this is this is the opening picture you get on his website, um, where he's eating a plate of peas with a knife and fork. A plate of peas with a knife and fork, and if you sort of go in, you can see that um, they have to have had. Uh, it's not just ordinary peas because ordinary peas wouldn't stick like that. So I reckon that they're sautéed peas, which he's eating with a knife. And Fork. And for some bizarre reason, he's um, drinking red wine with it. Now, I would have suggested if they are sautéed peas, which would be inc obviously would be with uh, buttered garlic, um, that you'd need a crisp white, um, which uh, William appears to have missed. And um, when I looked further into him, I discovered that he only went to a minor public school and went to the University of Manchester. So I think we can safely disregard everything that he has to say about anything. And I would demand personally that the Daily Telegraph never employ him again. Yes, harsh, mm, but fair. Um, next up, <laughs> next up, um, we had June Slater, one of those sort of weird GB News guests. I mean, I would call her the Poundland Carol Malone, but obviously Carol Malone is already the Poundland Carol Malone. And um, uh, she posted this up on Twitter, um, which was a, a, a piece about a survey into climate change and what people across the different countries would be willing to do. And apparently 40% uh, of people would be happy to accept forms of rationing. So she said BS, which I, I think stands for, stands for I don't believe stuff. I think that's what that is. 40% of what? Well, um, we've had a look at the survey. It's in Nature. Link down below if you want to read it for yourself. The methodology is quite sound. They used YouGov representative samples in a number of different countries, June. Yeah, that one. Anyway, yeah, you see, I do these. I, I look, don't I? I do the research. Um, how many were surveyed? Well, it does tell you, again, if you want to actually dive into that. I guess that's too much like it. I get, I get the ones agreeing to it have never actually lived through it. And then that got me thinking about, you know, people like June, who is, I think, just slightly older than I am, because she does belong to that sort of particular view of the commentariat as people who um, are were Spitfire pilots, but after the war. Now, if you <laughs> if you could possibly have remembered rationing in this country, you would realistically, at a minimum age, be need to be 75. I don't think June is. I think she's just a few years older than me. I could be wrong, OK? But even if you were born in, say, 1950, you know, which is as boomer as you can get, then you would only have understood rationing as a very, very small child and probably had no real inkling that it was happening whatsoever because, broadly speaking, the last rationing happened in 1954. Meat went off the ration. Good grief. Meat? Sausages? Mmm. Yeah, sautéed peas. Maybe have a crisp white with it, eh? Maybe not. Yes. So, just odd odd stuff and she gets platform she gets put on gp news because they know full well that when carol malone can't make it that she'll add that level of class that you know is required ah. anyway moving on to the proper stuff the actual um politics um there wasn't really a great deal on offer unfortunately there was very very little it appeared to be very very 
thin, thin, I think, other than, you know, generally speaking, giving um, giving the Labour Party a hard time because appar- apparently they're not being nice enough to the P&O ferry company, a company that really has your best interests at heart, undoubtedly. Or indeed, Elon Musk, who, you know, we really need to count out to, don't we, an awful lot because he's so vitally important to stuff. Anyway, yes, yeah, so we have the usual right-wing cant. And in particular, I did have to smile very much at this. Freedom of speech is in crisis, Suella Braveman says, after Cambridge cancellation. Yeah, Suella um, um, has said that because she was due to talk to a bunch of Tories at Cambridge and allegedly, and I'm going to use that word very, very precisely, allegedly was told by the police that it might not be a good idea if she went there because there was a counter-demonstration planned. Um, decided not to go. And she's bitching about the fact that she decided not to go. But for those of you with a certain memory or just being broadly human, you know, with a vague knowledge about anything, will recall, of course, that she was whisked off to Cambridge uh, about six months ago, courtesy of GB News, with no police escort, where she basically was trying to bait students who effectively ignored her. Hmm, not really a particular sort of huge security thing there. I mean, in those days, way back then, she was actually a contender, wasn't she? Before, you know, everybody decided that, in fact, she was so deeply unlikable that she basically wouldn't even get on the ballot to be leader. Oh, dear, what a shame. Yes, coming behind Pretty Patel in the likability stake. Still, never mind, Suella. Yeah, you can just moan and moan and moan and moan about your own irrelevance. Yes, you'll get always get a little bit of a little bit of leverage in the Daily Telegraph. But utter, utter tosh, utter tosh. I'm sorry, but tosh. And speaking of which, of course, we have now Robert Jenrick, who's come up with the world's worst ever plan. Well, maybe or maybe not, according to just how much of a racist you are. So here's Steve Eddington. A man with a beard, apparently. Yes, classy, classy indeed. I bet he he has his beard with a with a with a crisp white. He's that type of guy. Robert Jenrick pledges to deport all in inverted commas illegal migrants, therefore supporting mass deportations. Yeah, we get that, mate. Estimates suggest around one million illegals are in Britain. A recent study found the UK has more illegal migrants than any other European country, and there's a link to uh, a Daily Mail article which doesn't really say anything at all, other than isn't uh, Kemi and isn't Robert great? Yeah. But um, there are enormously large number of problems with this, which if you are something, somebody who, you know, isn't exactly a rabid racist will understand. Can you understand? Yeah, can you think about trying to deport a million people from the UK? Who's going to have them? Number one, who's going to have them? Right. What do we what do we do? What do we do? Do we do we do we throw them out a back of a plane over Albania or somewhere? What do we do with these people? And bearing in mind all of the issues that there were with just a handful of people from the Windrush generation in terms of actually proving whether or not they were supposed to be here, it would cost an absolute fortune. Notwithstanding the fact, of course, that it, it's such an irrelevance because Robert Jenrick, should he manage to become Tory leader and should he manage to still be Tory leader at the next election and should he manage to be elected as Tory leader and therefore prime minister at the next election, would actually have to implement this in some way. It's unworkable. It's unworkable in any form of civil liberties legislation you could think of. We would have to end up basically being an incredibly authoritarian present your papers place. And think of all those people, all right, okay, who have been here for a large number of years, many of whom will believe that they aren't illegal migrants, but their paperwork will say something else, who are married and settled. What happens to them and their kids? And of course, the the lovely, 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 very practical right-wing commentators are out there will say, we don't care. Well, we can put them all behind barbed wire and maybe just leave them for long enough so that they don't be a problem anymore. Yes, I'm sure you can see that there are loads of problems with this. And of course, it doesn't matter because the British press is now in its very, very, very strongly 1937 and 1938 um, supporting, supporting incredible right wing policies as just a matter of course.
Yes, I would consider that a bit gauche, personally. I wonder what an etiquette expert would have to say about trying to eat dinner with your knife and fork with some naff bit of red wine, whilst listening to the screams of people next door as their homes are burst into by the police. Hmm. Hmm. Still, cheer up. It might never happen. It might never happen. Mm. Do have a lovely Monday.